at the beginning of the 17th century, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was one of the European great powers, with a surface of 1 million square kilometers and almost 12 million inhabitants. Their eastern neighbor, Russia, had been experiencing the time of troubles since the death of Tsar Fyodor I in 1598, causing political instability and a violent succession crisis upon the extinction of the Rurik dynasty and was ravaged by the major famine of 1601 to 1603. There were three impostors between 1605 to 1612, all pretending to be the Tsarevich Dmitri Ivanovich, the youngest son of Ivan the Terrible, who died in 1591. Poland exploited Russia's civil wars with members of the Polish aristocracy influencing Russian buyers and supporting the false pretenders to the title of Tsar of Russia against the crown Boris Godunov and Vasily IV Shuisky. After a few skirmishes between Polish and Russian troops, Russia formed a military alliance with Sweden. In response, Polish King Sigismund III Vasa declared war on Russia in 1609, aiming to gain territorial concessions and weaken Sweden's ally. On the 4th of July 1610, at the Battle of Klusino near Smolensk, the outnumbered Polish forces led by Hetman Stanislav Zolkiewski secured a decisive victory over Russia. Soon after the battle, Tsar Vasily IV was ousted by a group of seven boyars and Zolkiewski entered Moscow with little opposition on the 21st of September. The seven boyars then proclaimed Vladislav IV Vasa, the son of the Polish king Sigismund, as the new Tsar of Russia. He claimed the Tsar's title from 1610 to 1634. Zolkiewski placed the soldiers in Moscow so that in the event of an attack they could come to each other's aid or retreat to the Kremlin. A significant part of the garrison was located west of the Kremlin wall near the Neglinaya river. At the end of 1610, about 6,000 armored and cavalry soldiers, 800 infantrymen and 400 hajduks were stationed at Moscow and Novodevichki convent. When Zolkiewski went to Smolensk in November for a meeting with Sigismund III, he took a part of the soldiers with him. Polish soldiers behaved in Moscow as in a captured city, and various incidents occurred regularly. The Russians assembled detachments of the People's Militia near Ryazan, and by the 19th of March 1611, they approached Moscow. The Polish command tried to force the cabbies in the capital to help them prepare the city for defense and to drag the cannons on their slates and put them on the walls. Most of them refused and the population of the city revolted against the Polish soldiers. The advanced detachments of the militia led by Prince Pozharski arrived in time to help the residents of the city. The Poles set fire to the city while retreating to Kitai Gorod and the Kremlin. Most of the city was liberated, but the Poles remained besieged in Kitai Gorod and the Kremlin, together with the seven boyars and the future Tsar Mikhail Fedorovich Romanov. In 1612, many of the garrison soldiers abandoned the city, while the rest continued the fighting despite the lack of food. On the 1st and the 3rd of September 1612, the Polish-Lithuanian forces unsuccessfully tried to break the siege of the Moscow Kremlin. They were attacked near the city by the Russian militia led by Prince Dmitry Pozharski and the Don Cossacks. The relief army was stopped only two kilometers from the Kremlin and was unable to resupply the garrison. Cossacks established control of Kitai Gorod at the beginning of November and the Kremlin garrison capitulated on the 7th of November 1612. At the moment of the capitulation, the Polish king Sigismund III was at Volokolamsk, less than 30 kilometers away. After finding out about the surrender, the king, who was on his way to help the garrison, decided to halt the march and head back to Poland. The Zemski Sobor elected Mikhail Romanov the 16-year-old son of Patriarch Tilaret of Moscow, Tsar of Russia, 
on the 21st of February 1613. The war against Poland continued until the 1619 truce of Deluno, where Russia lost the Smolensk and Chernihiv voivodeships.